Hi guys, so what we've got here is a uh, Monopoly and Perfectly uh, Competitive Marketplace comparison. Uh, now notice how I've drawn out the average revenue curve, the marginal revenue curve, and simply the marginal cost. I haven't worried about the average cost curve. Uh, now if the average cost curve was included here, we would need it to intersect at this level precisely to be a true comparison with a perfectly competitive firm because we know a perfectly competitive firm fulfills being allocatively efficient where price equals marginal cost as well as of course uh, having normal profits i.e. average cost equals average revenue. So our uh, competitive market outcome is PC and QC okay so we can see that there where price equals marginal cost it's allocatively efficient meanwhile for a monopoly we've got a price level of uh, pm and an output level of qm so a restricted output level higher price as we've seen before uh, they focus of course on the uh, profit maximization level which is where mc equals mr and we can see that quite clearly there so let's just do a quick quick assessment about consumer surplus and produce a surplus that we see within this diagram starting firstly with a capacitive marketplace well we can see there's the price level and the demand or the marginal benefit actually see, exceeds the price level right the way down to of course where price equals marginal cost and as such we can see that the consumer surplus would be A, B, C, D and F Okay, meanwhile, we can see that here the marginal cost of providing each uh, additional unit of output is, gr uh, is lower than the uh, price level uh, in areas E and G. Okay, so therefore we can see what our producer surplus is as well. Now, for a monopoly, notice restricted output, higher price. Okay, so we can see now, actually, we've only got this part of the demand curve which exceeds the new market price, okay? Uh, so the fact that we have areas A and B only. Meanwhile, we can see that areas C and D now become producer surplus. So they are now producer surplus, as is area E. F and G, meanwhile, are of course our deadweight economic loss. So there is our deadweight economic loss quite clearly. Uh, within those areas okay uh, so that is a loss of outputs a loss of potential uh, jobs it's a loss of potential profits it's a loss of uh, the benefit that would have been derived by the consumers and therefore it's a loss of consumer and producer surplus okay guys